whenever you have two great football teams that meet up in the Super Bowl and meet up in all these big games, um, there, there's going to be a history between that. And so, um, obviously, we've been able to win those games, um, but we know how good this football team is, and we have a ton of respect for them. Um, and so it's not like one play couldn't have changed all these football games. And so uh, we, we're going with that mindset of we just got to make the plays whenever they count. The history doesn't extend very far beyond the coaches and the quarterbacks in these games, especially since the quarterback for the 49ers, Brock Purdy, what, he was probably in high school when they played in the Super Bowl the first time. When they got together for the Super Bowl in February, we had the numbers of how many players were still on the team. And it's just dramatic change in four years, dramatic change. But Mahomes is still there. Andy Reid is still there. Kyle Shanahan's still there. And most of the team that on both sides saw each other in February is still there. And they get together again. Only the 10th meeting of Super Bowl teams from the prior year, the following season, the Super Bowl winner is 6-3. and three. And, Roddy, this is my favorite stat of the week because the 49ers are favoring this one by a point and a half. Patrick Mahomes as an underdog in his career is 11-1-1 as an underdog. And the Chiefs, who are undefeated and rested, we know how great Andy Reid is when you give him extra time to prepare, they're going to San Francisco as the underdogs. Just a little extra juice for Mahomes and the Chiefs to go in there and try to pull out a win. Mike, we always talk about the Chiefs and how bad they look and they don't have all the injuries that they've had and all, all the adversity that this team has gone through and all they do is continue to win. Um, if if I'm the 49ers, I don't want to get to a point offensively that I'm a one-dimensional team. And that's what Steve Spagnuolo and this defense tries to do. They try to make you a one-dimensional team and they get those pass rushes off, you, you know, after you. And that's how they create the turnovers and they control that aspect of the game. And to me, that's been the key for the Chiefs. We always talk about Mahomes and all these offensive weapons, but it's been Steve Spagnuolo. He's the best defensive coordinator in all of football. He he kicked our butts in the Super Bowl when he was with the Giants in 2007. I cannot rant and rave enough about the respect that I have for this man and the job that he's done. You look at some of those players like Justin Reed and Drew Tranquil, those role players, they just fit in seamlessly. And of course, Chris Jones, every time there's a big game, he makes the biggest plays, but a lot of respect and props to their defense, Mike. Chris Jones is amazing because you'll go through long stretches of a game, kind of like, where's, where's, what's Chris Jones doing today? Yes. And then when it's crunch, then when it's crunch time, he just starts throwing guys around and taking over the entire <laughs> offensive line. Yeah, that's when he's at his best, man. And that's what I love about him. And, you know, we talk about TJ Watt and those guys, but we've seen Chris Jones do it time and time again, continue to step up and be one of, if not the best player in the, in, in the best defensive player in the National Football League. But he's been fantastic. And, of course, you still, if you're San Francisco, defensively, you're not the same. You lost Javon Hargrave. You you lost your safety, uh, Talano Hufunga. You lost some guys, but you still have to deal with Travis Kelsey. And they're going to be bent out, especially with after all this rest, trying to get him going and trying to send a message to the rest of the league. Yeah, something Chris was saying yesterday in our Picks podcast, which is actually coming up later in its entirety, except for the Thursday night game here on PFT Live, but the defense is down to Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. The rest yeah. of the guys don't meet the standard that we've become accustomed to from the 49ers. So it puts more pressure on the offense, which creates another opportunity for Steve Spagnuolo's defense. This hopefully will be a close back and forth game. Should be exciting. The 49ers have three losses by a total of 10 points. The Chiefs, four of their wins were by seven points or fewer. They're 5-0 and and they don't feel like they're 5-0, and but they still have Patrick Mahomes, and these wins early in the season are money in the bank for a team that's trying to be the number one seed again this year, so they don't have to go on the road in the playoffs and win in Buffalo, win in Baltimore like they did last year. But they just when, when they have to do it, they do it. And that's why even though the 49ers are at home, 21-4, and four, Andy Reid is coming off a bye week. It just feels like another one of those games where it'll be in doubt, we'll worry about it, and at the end of the day, the Chiefs will find a way to win. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.